uh, bicentennial seawall like a progress report uh, to get your input to get uh, start to get the input of others uh, as we would proceed forward to the final design um, this is really just a preliminary design um, hopefully to get um, some feedback and some input from the board uh, I do have to say that um, Jennifer Hale apologizes for not being here um, she's had uh, uh, family obligation or, or issue come up um, and apologizes for not being here. Her plans were uh, to be here uh, with you or with us. Um, with that, you uh, need to pass one. That was cold. You whispered that. Yeah, hey, you whispered. You could hear it all the way up here. Nice whisper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we do such things, but anyhow. The, um, for members that are watching at home, um, there, we are also presenting this same package of information to the uh, Conservation Commission because as we get ready to start the permitting process through the state and the federal, federal government, uh, we need their input or concurrence, uh, or at least a letter of support. Also, we thought that we would go to the planning board uh, with the project as a way of um, reaching out to the community to get any uh, input that uh, we, we can get. Uh, with that, Duncan. Yeah, just to uh, walk you through, give you an overview here of an aerial photo showing the Bicentennial Park, uh, with the volleyball, the volleyball area behind the seawall and the beach in front of it. Uh, another view gives you a bit of better perspective of the concrete seawall we're talking about, uh, 300 feet long. What we found last fall was the seawall is, is bearing on just sand, on the beach sand, and it had very shallow embedment, only about one to two feet of embedment into the sand. So we were very concerned that the seawall would fall over last winter. Uh, you can see here the safety fencing up behind the seawall to keep people away from it in case it was to fail. And this is a view from last December where you can actually see here in the photograph the footing of the seawall is actually exposed. So it really did get quite close to being uh, all the sand being eroded all the way down to the bottom of the wall. Uh, you're aware that we went out there last uh, January and we did some emergency stabilization by placing a rock revetment in front of it. Uh, we excavated down and set geotextile and then set the stone on top of it. And it is the intent that this will become part of the permanent repair uh, to once we get the rest of the sta seawall stabilized. This is the uh, current status of the plan view for the seawall. Um, one of the things we're looking to do in the overall big picture here is to bring the seawall up so the height of the seawall matches the adjacent state seawall, uh, approximately two, two and a half feet higher than what's out there now. Um, you've probably seen it during storms or the waves over top this wall on a regular basis and erode the sand behind it. Uh, one of the things we want to do is raise it up, and, but a concern we heard was potentially blocking people's view of the ocean. Uh, that's one of the reasons they go out there is to see the ocean. Uh, so what we came up with for a concept cross-section is actually to put a walkway behind the seawall. So that walkway would also be two feet higher than where the sand level is now so that people could walk that walkway and maintain their view of the beach. Uh, it would actually incorporate seating walls on both sides. So the wall on the ocean side is two feet above the top of that walkway, so it's a comfortable place to sit. Uh, we're proposing a railing on top of it. On the inshore side, we've got another low wall there, and we envision that would be a seating wall for people watching the activities going on on the park. So if there's a volleyball game, you could sit along that wall and watch the volleyball game. Uh, but some of the uh, fu uh, practical functional aspects of this is uh, it protects the backfill of the seawall, so when those waves do overtop it, there's not just sand there that's going to erode and allow the wall to fail. So we're somewhat armoring the area behind the seawall to help prevent that possible failure. Um, it also will assist in storm cleanup, so when seaweed and rocks and so on come washing over the top of this wall during a storm, it would be easier for Chris to go out there and clean it up, and then he'll have a hard surface he can run along with a machine and, and scoop all that up. So a lot of considerations in looking at this. Um, the engineering details, we're starting to work those out. The state at seawall that's adjacent is on sheet piling that bears all the way down to bedrock. And that's what we're showing here. It's really not that far down, about 12 to 18 feet down to bedrock. 
Um, so we are looking to put new steel sheet piling in there to ensure that this wall does not fail in the future. Uh, you know, we did have that concern about the existing wall. You know from being out there, the beach can change profile all the time. It's normal that the sand goes out in the winter and then comes back in the summer. It's usually those winter events when we might lose the seawall. Uh, so this will guard against that. Uh, what we'd like to start getting input on is what does the top of this wall, the visual, visual portion of it, actually look like? Uh, so again, as Chris mentioned, we're reaching out now uh, to the public and to you to see, for instance, on the railing, uh, you know, what type of railing would you like to see out there? Uh, we do want to make sure that it's a good durable railing that's going to stand up to storms, but we also, it's an aesthetic issue, and so we do want to get some input on that. Some other things we might look at on the concrete, you know, do you want to have, for instance, on those seating walls, uh, maybe a granite cap on top, so there's a granite surface you could sit on, or we could go with something like a, an Ipe uh, hardwood that would be a, a nicer, uh, warmer thing to sit on. Top, on. Uh, so those sort of practical aspects on how we'd look at this. Um, in plan view, we are incorporating a curve on the eastern end of this. If you've been down there, a lot of times at the end where the beach access ramp is, there tends to trap seaweed. As that seaweed rots, it gets kind of stinky. So we are looking to incorporate a curved uh, corner on that end of the seawall to help allow that seaweed to pass and continue washing down the shoreline and not get trapped in there. Um, we think the aesthetic of the curve will also be nicer for users of the park. Uh, the other end, we are since we are two feet higher, we are going to have to incorporate a ramp down which would provide access to the parking lot and bring the walkway back down to the elevation of the state walkway. Uh, we have spoken with DREAD and they've indicated that they don't have any plans to do any near-term upgrades, for instance, raising their sidewalk up uh, to address sea level rise. Uh, so we, we, at this point, we'll have to meet the elevation that they're at right now. Questions for the board? Regina? From the board. I don't know. I don't have any questions right now. Rusty? No, I think it's, it's a good plan. We need to, we obviously, we need to do something with that wall, but we also got to make sure, you know, it's nice to have all these seats and everything in it, but what's the cost was going to be? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, great uh, initiative, great uh, creativity. Uh, that's a beautiful, beautiful park, and it's been uh, sadly neglected, and it's been uh, quite dangerous. So thank you, Director. Thank you for stepping up on that, Mr. Welch. Uh, like the uh, the concept of the, uh, um, as you call it, the additional revetment stone, that uh, the, my, my grandkids are all over it, and it, it really is much more aesthetic, and I know it's going to preserve the wall just as the state has got it down there. So I would, I would uh, assume that's going to be a, a definite for the incorporation. The state accesses their repair of the state seawall uh, every uh, several years uh, using uh, this part of the beach right here, as we all know, it's right down here, and they use that. So we'd be looking uh, for you, Director, and you, uh, sir, to uh, make liaison with them to share in some of the costs, uh, as they will be uh, using that. That's their primary source. It is uh, highly uh, erosion uh, prone. Uh, again, we've talked a little bit earlier about their, their revenue take out of this town, and uh, I would like to see, I don't speak for the board, but a substantial contribution for them to contribute um, to that, that specific part and uh, uh, look to them for the uh, battle rhythm of the uh, wall replacement every year and how that, how that gets into a close integration with them, both in terms of maintenance, uh, reconstruction, and uh, a capital contribution uh, on this project. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick? Um, it's certainly long overdue. It's something that needs to be done, and um, I think it's something that everyone's looking forward to. I like the idea of the curve at the end. And um, good luck. I hope it's, we're doing all the right things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I like the I like the idea that you're asking for input from people on what it should look like because the seawall itself, the state seawall, you know, is, it protects the beach, protects the road very well and stuff. But it's not a very eye appealing wall <laughs> at all. Right. And that part of the beach there is well used by people year round. There are people down there using that, sitting there behind the wall and everything else. And it's a beautiful, beautiful area. And I like the idea that we're going to do something with the wall. It might cost a little more, might not cost a little more. I think we can investigate it. But that will have some visual appeal to it also. I mean, down at the main beach, you have the wall with the railing, and it's got a visual appeal. Whereas, you know, all along North Beach, it's just that cement wall, and it's just cement, cement, cement. So I, I really like that idea, and I love, really like the idea that you're going to look for 
input from people, and there's a lot of in people that spend a lot of time down there. So you really should try and get input from the, the public down there. We think they're important. Hey, Jim, I got one yeah, question. Go. Sorry. Why? Why? And I should have brought it up earlier. Why? Why are you talking about this? The drainage is in that area that the state has. It's been damaged. The other floor. Are they? Uh, are they, are they stepping up to, to fix that? Are they? Uh, we, we reached out to uh, Kevin Russell, is the local engineer, uh, inspecting engineer, and also Brian Shutt, S H U T T is his last name. And he's at Division Six. This what Rusty's referring to, Mr. Brian Long, should say. The Rusty's uh, fine. Is there's an out concrete outfall here? This is all concrete pipe with a concrete mass. At the end, that had had um, they looked like uh, cast iron. Uh, a flapper is the best thing I can describe it. The cast iron's gone. The concrete's shot. The pipes all pulled apart. It is obvious that what it is is the drainage um, for the state's catch basins out here that outlets this way. Uh, put them on notice that it needs to be done through verbal communications and written communications. Um, Brian Shutt is trying to put this in his uh, 27, 2018 uh, capital improvement plan. They're on, a, they're on a, uh, June to July, so they're already in their 17, 18 season. Um, but that this needs to be done uh, on their dime at their cost, uh, meeting, if you will, my, my, uh, my standards. Um, because if it gets plugged with seaweed, I'm going to be the one that uh, knowingly is going to have to come down and do something uh, to, you know, let's say it's uh, early on a Friday morning, it's going to be a great beach weekend. They may not be have the capability to respond, but I know sometimes the call comes to us. One of the reasons um, that we came up with, and this is to address, um, someone made the comment, you know, uh, the additional concrete. Can you go to the cross section? Yeah. Please. When we were looking at this in, in one of our design meetings, um, Ty and Bond had already recognized that we needed to put in possibly a concrete uh, sidewalk on the back side of this so that when there's a splash over, it doesn't erode this sand and thus erode um, the uh, seawall. A number of seawall failures are not due to, if you will, being eroded here. They're actually caused by being eroded on the back side. Then when the wave action hits it, it actually tips the wall backwards. So that was the reason for that. When we were having that discussion, the, the next logical thing came up and said, well, I suggested why don't you put a curb on the back side to take this water and channel it. We can grade it so it's channeled left or right and not right over the, the, uh, right the seawall. Also, it would allow me to, with, the street, with my sweeper and um, our crews in the morning better maintain this, especially with this debris. Then the other idea was, well, why don't we, instead of just making it a curb, why don't we make it a full width seating so that people using the volleyball area right here, and, and Diana can tell you, there's a lot of uh, activity there during this, during afternoon <coughs> nights for the volleyball. And yes, during the morning, uh, everybody who's, um, I, I know they've got a, a unique name, but it's the crowd Walnuts. that gathered, huh? Walnuts. <laughs> That's why I didn't remember that name. The crowd that gathers, the walnuts that gather down here, I knew that they needed better access. Uh, if if uh, where the chairs go, um, I know there's a couple of handicapped spots there, and there's a number of people that are, are probably using wheelchairs that would also want to come and look at the, the ocean. This would give them, everybody, it would be ADA accessible everybody would get the chance. So uh, if someone who lives up here, grandkids can play here, you know, they just it becomes more of a multi-use space. So it isn't just strictly a wall, uh, a concrete slab. You know, all of this definitely needed to be in, but it's this portion here. And, and while we're here to get your, your thoughts um, that make this more of an amenity than just a structural piece of concrete. So. If anyone was wondering, we are leaving the majority of the seawall that's there now in place, uh, cost-wise. Uh, it costs money to get rid of it. It would cost money to jackhammer it out of place. But we are taking off about the top three feet of it. 
and uh, most of the she sheathing were going right behind it. And if you could back up two photos, maybe, yeah. This section here, the sea wall, that's the roughest. It's also not in line with either this wall or that wall. That is being removed in full. And uh, what we're going with here, um, this is going to have a peak elevation here of uh, 14. Not that, that matters to here, 745 down here and 11.3 here. Continually, I'm having to go down, um, especially prior storms, and you see the fun-looking Jersey barriers and that pile of stone that looks like an afterthought. The hopes there are that by making this ramp come up and over and then back down that I wouldn't, uh, it's going to minimize our risk to uh, see flooding coming up through there. I'll probably still have to do something on an annual basis, especially for the big storms, but at least it won't look as obtrusive as it uh, does now. That's it. Any other comments? Um, so are there any other drains uh, like that one that drain from the boulevard to the ocean? Because there only, are some. There's two some. other that I know of. One's at Haverhill Lab and a little further down, a little south from Haverhill, because the state dug those up a couple of years ago. And there's one like at right around... Uh, Shaw. There's one at Shaw, too. Yeah. But there is one that's uh, just south of Boar's Head. Okay. Uh, because you can see the when the waves break, you can see it moving back and forth. Okay. Uh, it's about two or three blocks south of Boar's Head, about uh, where Dick Roy's condos are there, the timeshare. It's about where uh, Breakers by the Sea, kind of opposite that. Hmm. And I saw the state working on it. They did fix it this year. Hmm. Okay. And the, the road was closed for a while. That's what brought my attention to it. So I'm wondering, you know, are they planning on, are there others? Or why aren't they putting all the drains that don't work into their capital budget? <laughs> <laughs> that I don't have. <laughs> well, that's something we need to be working on. And there's going to be a meeting on Thursday night about flooding, is there? Green Street is Thursday night. And where is that at? Here? That is here. So is it just for the people at Green Street? Yes. Because the solution and problems are different than, let's say, for the people that are off of Brown Out. Where that meeting is the following week at the police station. Same evening, Thursday evening. Because theirs is a radically different solution. Yeah, because I maintain that some of those drains that don't work on Ocean Boulevard, they're, the water that doesn't get drained off drains down and makes their problem even worse on the State Street and Kings Highway. Good, good. And uh, that's all I have about that, but I have something else I want to ask Chris about. Yeah, just one, one last comment on this, Rick, if yeah. I may. Uh, and again, going back to that bond issue that we talked about, this is a beach issue. Uh, if you look at uh, Christina's uh, um, handout that went to the, to the board, if you do a 20-year bond, the annual payout on the high end is 76000 That $1.6 million meter transfer, just the meters, which is net profit, just on the meters, uh, bonds $20 million of capital projects. Uh, and we pinch pennies, and that shows you in just a very small fraction of what leaves here, and that's just for the meter transfer, just for the meter transfer. Mm -hmm. And then we struggle, and we pinch pennies, and we let assets depreciate and, and become dangerous to this extent, and then we uh, we pinch pennies. But again, uh, that money just on the meters is a twenty million dollar bond. The seventy six thousand dollar payout, and the math is simple. And for those that don't get it, um, anybody wants to talk to me, I'll be happy to share it with you and so on, Christy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you.